Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We were discussing hardware design. In this lecture, we are going to see details about capacitors. There are numerous places in a power converter where we need to put capacitors. Some of those places are your DC bus. Whenever you need to form a DC bus, let us say if you have a inverter where uh, the DC bus is being created uh, from a rectifier, so there we need capacitors or if we have DC to DC converters, there also we will be needing big large capacitors. So, DC bus is one place where we need capacitors. Then power LC filters that may be low frequency filters or relatively little higher frequencies also, but power LC filters is where we need C. And then snubbers, if we use RC snubber, RCD snubbers or other types of snubbers, most of them need capacitors. Further AC power factor correction circuits, DC rail decoupling and EMI filters. These are some of the places where we need capacitors and power converters. Apart from that also there may be other uh, roles of capacitor in your power converter. Now, if we observe these applications, then we see that the way the capacitor is going to play its role is different in different places. When we have the DC bus, the job of the capacitor is to maintain the DC bus voltage. Whereas, if let us say if we are using it as a filter, if we have an input filter, a big LC filter, a three phase LC filter let us say. So, then uh, it has to filter out the currents and it will, it has to withstand a sinusoidal voltage. So, that um, capacitor, its requirement are going to be different than what is required by a DC bus capacitor. Further, if we put capacitor in snubber, so it has to withstand the switching, uh, your fast switching turn on and turn off that takes place. At that time, the capacitor also has to charge discharge very quickly and uh, support the turn off process or turn off process of the device. So, what we observe is that in different different places, the capacitor role becomes different and accordingly, the requirement of the capacitor will also be different means its specifications are also going to be different. So, there cannot be only one single type of capacitor there are many different types of capacitors. Some of the common types of capacitors are your electrolytic. In electrolytic also there are subcategories uh, like your aluminum and tantalum. Further we have film capacitors. These can be your polyester, polypropylene and polystyrene. These are some of the types of film capacitors and then your ceramic capacitors uh, which uh, are sometimes single layer, sometimes multi layer. So, these are some of the different types of capacitors that are used in power electronic converters. Now, let us see some pictures of capacitors. Uh, this course is designed with perspective of a beginner in hardware design for power electronic converters. So, I am going to show you pictures uh, of uh, the capacitors, they are different types, some of which you might have already seen it or you might have already used and uh, some of which you might not have used or seen. So, this one should be very familiar to you this uh, electrolytic capacitors, these are usually used uh, in a power supplies and in DC bus and this usually the capacitance is large for these electrolytic capacitors. And uh, in that uh, your another category is your tantalum caps. So, these are also used in your DC power supplies or so regulated power supplies. And this is uh, that uh, through hole package and this is a SMD package of the same, same your tantalum capacitors. Now, uh, these capacitors electrolytic caps uh, these are usually uh, unipolar that means one of these terminals is positive and another terminal is negative. You cannot connect it in the reverse that means you cannot apply AC through it they are mostly not able to withstand that. So, these are unipolar. Then next uh, this is your film 
capacitors these are used in your uh, filter applications and they can withstand AC. So, these are pictures of some of these uh, film AC capacitors you can see that these are also cylindrical in shape, but usually if you see their capacitance value that will be much lesser than what you get in electrolytic capacitor for the same size. So, uh, this is for low frequency AC and if we have a high frequency AC to be applied then uh, this is picture of uh, one film capacitor which can be used for that purpose. Then next uh, we need filters for uh, EMI applications also there these kind of uh, capacitors are used and mostly X and Y caps are used this we have discussed uh, before also I had shown you. So, these uh, not only are used in EMI filtering applications other places also for decoupling also um, these uh, kind of capacitors are used and these are also film capacitors. Further another type of uh, film capacitors uh, you can uh, see this is a plastic film capacitors and these type of capacitors are mostly used in snubbers. And uh, all these that I showed you in the category of film capacitors uh, they are not unipolar that means no polarity of positive and negative is marked beforehand by the manufacturer and you can apply AC voltage across them. Then uh, this one is your ceramic cap these are very small small capacitors which also you might have used in uh, your basic electronics uh, lab. So, uh, these are mostly used as uh, decoupling caps uh, or in uh, analog electronic circuits uh, they are very much used. So, uh, these are also available in your SMD these small small chip size or box size uh, of your surface mount device capacitors. So, and these are usually the value of the capacitance is uh, much smaller than your electrolytic or film capacitors. Now, the main specification in capacitors are your voltage rating and the capacitance. The whenever we hear about uh, capacitor and uh, if we have to get one, so mostly we will be asking that this is the value of the capacitance that I need and for it has to withstand this much amount of voltage. So, uh, when you know that then uh, uh, which is the type of capacitor uh, which is likely to suit your purpose. So, this graph it shows uh, between your range of capacitance and your rated voltage range which type of capacitors are available. So, here you can see that uh, that in this range that means from your about few microfarad to about uh, the range of farads about a farad your aluminum electrolytic capacitors are available they can be manufactured. And the voltage rating you can see that it is about uh, you are starting from about tens of volts uh, to about 600, 700 volt is, is the range voltage range in which your aluminum electrolytic capacitors are available. Then uh, if we see film capacitor you can see this box of film capacitor. This is the box that is given uh, by the manufacturer. So, this graph is taken by uh, one of the manufacturer of capacitors TDK. So, here uh, you see that for film capacitor the voltage range uh, begins slightly higher uh, about less than 100 volts and uh, then the voltage range goes up to around here you can see that about 5 kilo volt. And uh, the range of capacitance uh, you can observe here it is uh, from less than nanofarad to about uh, millifarad is what is the range where film capacitors are manufactured. Further uh, if we see um, your uh, ceramic capacitors, so ceramic capacitors different types you can see that this type of the ceramic capacitor. It starts from about a picofarad uh, to the range is uh, less than microfarad and the voltage range you can see here that this voltage range is uh, more than 10 volts to about uh, greater than kilo volts is in which this ceramic 
capacitor are manufactured. Similarly, you can see for another type of uh, ceramic capacitor what is the range and uh, then uh, what is the frequency in which it is manufactured. And also you might have heard about uh, super capacitor, they can store much more energy than uh, the normal uh, capacitors uh, that uh, we usually use. So, uh, that you can see here this uh, range is from 1 millifarad to about a uh, farad and uh, uh, although the um, voltage over here the range that is given is, uh, is small. So, uh, with this you get an idea that uh, which type of capacitor is available in what capacitance range and what voltage range. Now, let us look into the equivalent circuit of a capacitor. So, when uh, we hear capacitor, uh, ideally a capacitor should have only capacitance, it should not have any other parasitics. But practically every capacitor will have some parasitics. So, the equivalent circuit of a capacitor is usually like this. So, RS this is the ESR effective series resistance of the capacitor and LS is the effective series inductance LS ESL and CR is this uh, ideal capacitor uh, which it should be and RI is the leakage resistance. Now, when we see this equivalent circuit, then uh, uh, we see that uh, because of uh, these parasitic inductance, there will be a resonant frequency. And that resonant frequency will be given by omega r as equal to root over of L s c r. So, what we observe from here if we have uh, to find out the impedance of uh, this practical capacitor, then the impedance is going to vary with frequency. So, if we have to write that, so this impedance z will be equal to R s plus uh, j x which will be given as R s minus j omega c r. Now, here we have ignored L s and R i. Uh, we can ignore R i because usually R i is uh, very large. So, uh, usually very less current uh, flows through this R i and uh, that current is called as this uh, leakage current. and this is because of the dielectric insulator, the non ideality of the dielectric insulator. The dielectric should act as a perfect insulator, but uh, it does not and there is a sm uh, um, high resistance associated with it and some small current flows through it and that is the leakage current. Now, uh, of course, uh, this uh, will lead to some heating and that is going to reduce the lifetime of the capacitor. So, that is not desired, but um, uh, for the purpose of uh, finding out the impedance R i this leakage resistance can be ignored. And uh, further we are also ignoring ESL the effective series inductance. Now, this inductance value of course, this is a parasitic it is very small. And uh, for very large range of frequency which, uh, which is uh, less than your resonant frequency, much less than your resonant frequency, this uh, 
ls is small enough uh, so that it can be ignored the drop associated with it is very small so then the impedance can be written as rs minus j omega cr rs by minus j by omega cr now if we uh, see uh, the phasor diagram so if we have this is the voltage and uh, with it is the real power p and quadrature to that will be the reactive power q and if we have to draw the current so the current will be lying somewhere here and there is an angle to it that is that angle delta. So, tan delta will be equal to R s by x c which will be equal to R s by into omega c r. So, this uh, delta is called as the loss angle and tan delta this is called as the dissipation factor. Now, this is an important specification in the data sheet of capacitor because um, as you can see that uh, if you want ideal behavior then this I should be uh, 90 degrees to V, but that does not happen because of this ESR of the capacitor and the higher this resistance is uh, greater is this angle delta is going to be and you can see that the more the ESR the more the loss is going to occur inside the capacitor and more heating and uh, so more quickly it is likely to get damaged. Now, in this graph it shows the variation of uh, this ESR and the capacitor with respect to temperature and frequency. Now, here you can see that uh, this axis shows temperature and uh, this axis shows your uh, uh, ESR and the capacitor. So, these are for two uh, capacitors it is uh, shown here aluminum capacitors uh, different types. So, you can see that that this uh, resistance it decreases with temperature ok and somewhere here you can see for some time it is almost like a constant and then again it is increasing it is varying. And uh, uh, if we uh, see the capacitance that also we can see here that this also varies uh, with the temperature. So, capacitors uh, they usually work for a given range of temperature and uh, they do change with temperature they it is not that for all temperatures they you will be getting a fixed value. So, for uh, capacitors say generally as a function of temperature it is given as the capacitance at 20 degree C 1 plus alpha T minus of 20 degree C and uh, what is this uh, alpha? This uh, alpha is the temperature dependence of capacitor coefficient. So, uh, uh, from here uh, we observe that uh, usually at a particular temperature the capacitance uh, will be specified and if you also know the alpha value then you can find out at some other temperature what will be the value of the capacitance. So, the thing to be noted is that capacitance does vary with temperature and you can use capacitors for a given range of temperatures. Further here what uh, we see that on x axis we have got frequency and on y axis again we have got the ESR and the capacitor. So, uh, there also we see that this capacitance changes with frequency and this ESR value also varies with frequency. So, again the both resistance and the capacitance the ESR and the capacitance they vary with frequency. So, depending on the frequency of use you have to know that uh, what is mentioned in the data sheet uh, you may not be getting exactly the 
same value because you may not uh, be using the capacitor exactly at the frequency at which the manufacturer might have provided the data or might have tested these uh, and obtained the values. Further here uh, this is a graph between the impedance of the capacitor and the frequency. Here also you see that uh, what is happening is that as frequency is increasing the capacitance this impedance is decreasing. So, it that is obvious uh, because as your frequency increases uh, because of the capacitance effect you will see a decrease in the impedance. And this is over here uh, uh, at uh, resonance, so this is your resonant frequency and uh, then uh, this uh, increases, this impedance is going to increase because after that uh, the LS effect uh, will start to dominate. And this graph uh, shows between uh, dissipation factor tan delta and the frequency. So, this also we see that uh, with frequency this is increasing at higher frequencies you are going to get higher dissipation factors. So, now the next uh, important specification in uh, capacitors is the current ripple. You might recall when we discussed buck converter and also edge bridge converters, there you saw the nature of the capacitor current. So, the capacitor current uh, you may recall for your buck converter was something like this your IC current. So, here uh, this is uh, the nature of the current uh, is that that it has got uh, ripples in it. Now, uh, its average may be 0, but then it has got an RMS value and uh, this RMS current, this continuous charging and discharging of the capacitor that is going to happen that uh, will um, lead to some heating in the capacitor because of the ESR that is present. So, your power dissipated um, corresponding to the ripple current will be equal to this uh, IR hat uh, square into RS. Now, whatever the heating that will take place that will be raising the temperature of the capacitor also. So, this effect is unwanted and only to a certain extent uh, this uh, uh, can be the capacitor can withstand it. So, accordingly uh, this uh, ripple current will have a limit. And uh, as we see that this RS is uh, dependent on temperature and it is also dependent on frequency. So, obviously, this then your uh, ripple current limit will also be dependent on frequency and temperature. So, this is an important uh, specification which you should be looking for in the data sheet of a capacitor. And it depends uh, on your application. Uh, uh, if you have a DC bus, uh, there, uh, what is the nature of the ripple current? How much is your ripple current uh, reaching up to? You should see the capacitor current waveform. You should find out that and uh, whatever capacitor you choose, its uh, ripple current specification should be higher than what is required in your application. Further, another important rating is uh, your dv by dt rating. So, dv by dt rating this uh, uh, what it uh, means is that that how uh, fast or how quickly the voltage can change in the capacitor. The capacitor uh, if you have an AC capacitor then uh, uh, your voltage will be changing uh, through it. And if you have a DC capacitor, it is likely to hold, uh, maintain the voltage, it is likely to store a lot of energy. So, uh, in applications like snubbers where um, your turn on and turn off in that your capacitor is playing a role, your voltage is supposed to change very quickly through it. So, you have to see that if you choose a capacitor for a snubber, a dv by dt rating should uh, be high enough uh, so that your turn on and turn off process can happen properly. Whereas, uh, if you have some other uh, application where you would like to the capacitor has to maintain the DC bus voltage, 
So, their uh, your voltage through the capacitor is not changing so quickly and your dv by dt rating is not so important for there. So, this dv by dt rating means whatever capacitor that you are using how quickly does it allow the rate of uh, uh, the change of voltage through it is an important specification in for capacitors. Another important uh, uh, specification that uh, you may look for is the life expectancy or the failure rate of the capacitor. So, uh, there is a term called as failure rate lambda which is uh, given as a number of failures by expected service life. Now, everything has uh, got a life after which it gets damaged uh, that is what uh, we generally understand, but uh, how uh, do we quantify that for capacitors. So, whatever the specifications that are given for the capacitor, the capacitor has uh, to provide that value. If it is not able to do that um, or it is deviating from that, so then uh, we can say that uh, that it is degraded or uh, its um, service life is over. So, uh, then um, um, how it is determined is that uh, several different capacitors let us say a n number of capacitors are taken and uh, for that uh, then um, it is uh, deviation from those values those are observed and the number of times it fails that is noted down and uh, then in what time period it is doing that is uh, uh, also uh, noted. So, there uh, be your if we have uh, got a sample of uh, n, so this lambda this will be given by 1 by n to delta uh, n by delta t that means uh, let us say for a chosen capital n uh, values of uh, capacitors uh, if delta n failed in delta t period of time. So, the failure rate is um, accordingly can be obtained from this. And uh, this shows the reliability because uh, uh, this uh, delta n is a percentage of this total number of samples n that is uh, taken. And uh, this uh, expected service life uh, uh, that uh, uh, manufacturers will know that what is the expected service life and from here you, uh, you get the uh, number of hours or number of times uh, the capacitor is expected to work. So, that is also specified in the data sheet by manufacturers in different ways and you can look for it uh, for how long the capacitor is going to is likely to work. Now, let us look into the data sheets of some of the capacitors. Now, this uh, is uh, this aluminum case capacitor that um, uh, you can see that that uh, for which this data sheet is and here uh, you can see that what are the different uh, specifications that are uh, written the temperature range is provided and maximum permissible ambient temperature is also given. Then capacitance uh, tolerance uh, it is uh, given as uh, uh, the code is provided. Now, this uh, data sheet is for a series of capacitors not just for one capacitor. So, for that uh, the voltage range is specified you can see that the DC voltage is uh, 400 volt and 600 volt and uh, then the peak voltage is uh, 600 volt and the AC RMS voltage is 250. Now, this uh, you have to note down the AC voltage rating, the DC voltage rating and peak voltage rating is different. Peak is something which you can apply for a short period of time and DC voltage is something which you can apply continuously. So, uh, these ratings are different and uh, so that is what you um, have to note down uh, is whether according to what you need or not when you choose a capacitor. 
Then uh, further if we see here the, uh, the manufacturer has uh, given one table. Now uh, this is for the series but the values they have given is like this, this one uh, is for 15 microfarad and uh, the DC voltage is 400 volt and then um, you can see here uh, this uh, uh, is given your know, dissipation factor that those values are given the maximum and the typical. Then the ESR value is also given. Further what we see here is it is dV by dt rating it is 30 volt per microsecond. The I RMS current what is the RMS current that uh, this capacitor can withstand and the peak of that current peak current it, it can withstand only for very short period of time that is 450 ampere. And uh, further these are the dimensions and um, your uh, weight of the capacitor that is provided and here you can see that this is degree C per watt uh, so it is uh, related to your uh, temperature. So these are some of the important uh, uh, parameters that you can see specifications that uh, you have to note down for the for choosing the capacitor. Now let us see the data sheet of a electrolytic capacitor. So this is an aluminum electrolytic capacitor and uh, here uh, you can see that uh, this uh, service hours the life is given as up to 18,000 hours for 85 degree C that is what uh, the uh, manufacturer has uh, written then high ripple current high voltage compact size this is what uh, the manufacturer has uh, written as the benefits and this is the picture of the capacitor. Now um, you can see here that further uh, for this uh, series uh, this uh, voltage range the VDC is given that uh, this capacitor come in 350, 400, 450, 500 and 550 volts. Now uh, you can note down here the capacitance range for this series of capacitor is given as 56 to 82,000 microfarad. And the rated voltage is also given as 35 to 550 volt DC for the series and the temperature range is also provided. And the capacitance tolerance is given as uh, plus minus 20 degree at uh, 100 hertz. Then you can see that uh, here uh, this operational lifetime is provided for uh, this uh, different dimensions in this series uh, how many hours uh, of uh, lifetime it, it has got. And then um, end of life requirement uh, what do we mean by end of life requirement is delta C by C should be less than plus minus 10 percent that is what uh, is given and the shelf life is also provided here. Then further the leakage current that is given here it is uh, um, uh, this is uh, uh, whatever is smaller uh, of uh, these two that is what is written as the, as the leakage current. So, it, it has to be 0 0.006 CV or 6000 micro ampere which is the rated capacitance uh, in microfarad and V is the rated voltage. Then uh, further some vibration test specifications are also provided by the uh, manufacturer and uh, what we see further is the surge voltage uh, uh, means if you apply for a short duration of time a surge voltage appears then what could be that voltage a uh, maximum voltage surge voltage that the capacitor can withstand those specifications are also provided uh, uh, over here that also you can see here what is the voltage that is given and how much time it, it is applied for uh, uh, that is also provided the condition of the surge voltage is also provided. Further in this data sheet you can see that for this series uh, uh, these are the specifications that are given that is for 35 volt uh, DC what is the size code and uh, what is the part number let us say it, this is the part number that we are looking for. Then uh, you see that the capacitance is uh, this value at 100 hertz and 20 degree C and the ripple current is 7.16 ampere at 100 hertz 
and it is 10.03 at 10 kilohertz. So, as I had told you that ripple current is dependent on the frequency. So, you can see here that uh, two different specifications of ripple current are given for two different frequencies. And then the ESR value is also provided and the maximum impedance at 10 kilohertz uh, that is also given. So, uh, like that you can uh, look through the whole data sheet uh, of these kind of capacitors and uh, then um, look for the values that is required for your application and choose the one that is suitable. Now, uh, this is a data sheet of uh, another film capacitor and uh, you can see here that uh, this is the range of voltage in which uh, uh, this capacitor uh, can be found out that is 250 to 850 volt DC and 160 to 450 volt AC. And uh, uh, you can uh, see here that again the benefits of, of uh, these of this capacitor is uh, written by the manufacturer and they have also written that this is suitable for high frequency applications. And uh, the typical application of uh, the capacitor uh, of for which this data sheet is you can see here that is also mentioned by the manufacturer. Now, here you can see that again temperature range, ambient temperature, capacitance uh, tolerance values and uh, then uh, the peak non-repetitive maximum current, uh, these things your dissipation factor these are mentioned by the manufacturer. Yeah, there are several man specifications that are given uh, you can go through the data sheet and most of them are self explanatory. And suppose some of the specifications are not able to understand what uh, they have written, you can go to the application notes by the manufacturers and then usually they will describe what that specification means. Now, here further again you see that for uh, this data sheet here uh, what is given is the capacitance value VDC, VAC, peak VDC which is higher than this VDC value that is given by the manufacturer. Further here again you see that this ripple current is uh, specified by the uh, manufacturer and the peak current for short duration what the capacitor can withstand the ESR of the capacitor the dv by dt rating this is also given by this uh, by the manufacturer. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are that that uh, your choice of capacitor depends uh, on the role in the circuit, your specifications what you need uh, that you have to decide and accordingly you have to choose uh, the particular type of capacitor that is going to be suitable. And uh, you should look for all important uh, specifications of, um, for your application and not just the voltage and the value of capacitance. Thank you. Thank you.